Uluru. In this lecture, we're going to travel across back to the United States, to the state of Wyoming, to look at a giant, tall rock tower that also rises high above the surrounding plains, Devil's Tower. Um, now, let's say you're a Hollywood movie producer, and you want to make a movie about aliens that come to the Earth who want to communicate with humans. You want to have the meeting place somewhere spectacular and strange, but also familiar to moviegoers. What do you choose? Devil's Tower, of course, as Steven Spielberg did when he filmed Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to look at a pile of mashed potatoes again. I'm going to want to keep pulling it up into a tower, just like Devil's Tower. If you haven't seen the movie, you should and you'll understand my reference. Now, this lecture is along similar lines to the previous one. But Devil's Tower doesn't look anything like Ayers Rock, Iluru. In fact, the two have almost nothing in common with each other, other that they're both really big rocks that stick up above the surrounding lands. Now, I have to give us an aside here on, on sort of words here. Initially, the initial name for this monument was Devil's Tower, D-E-V-I-L apostrophe S. Um, it was actually America's first national monument. It was declared by President Teddy Roosevelt back in 1906. But the official written proclamation misspelled the name. It mistakenly left off the apostrophe. So even though the grammar is incorrect, it has been Devil's Tower with no apostrophe uh, ever since. Now, Devil's Tower is a striking rock um, for a number of reasons. It's very tall. It rises nearly vertically, over 1,200 feet, 386 meters, above the surrounding lands. It's got a, a flat top, which seems to have just been cut off with a knife. And it seems to be made with a large number of tall columns that can sometimes be as much as eight feet in diameter, and um, that uh, taper in shape very strangely going from the bottom up to the top. The columns are usually five or six sided, but they can be more or less. There are some that are four or three sided, some that are seven or eight sided. And there are large numbers of these, of these columns that have broken off over time and have fallen to the base, suggesting that um, Devil's Tower at one time was even much wider than it is currently. Well, how does such a strange shape form? And why does it seem to be made of separate individual columns? Well, as you can probably guess, the reason that it sticks up is a result of the process of differential erosion, just as with Uluru. Um, Devil's Tower, in fact, used to be entirely underground back when the level of the ground was at a much higher uh, elevation. So what is Devil's Tower made of that it's so tougher than the surrounding rocks, so that when the rest of the ground eroded and washed away, this tower was left standing. Well, it's a type of rock called a phonolite, which is a type of igneous rock that's somewhere in between composition of um, a, a granite and a basalt in composition. And let me show you an example of that here. This rock here, not very exciting to look at, is a phonolite. Now, it's a type of igneous rock. It cooled from magma. We've been dealing a lot with sedimentary rocks recently in several of our recent lectures, things like limestone, sandstone, shales, etc. The igneous rocks are a lot stronger for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, the crystals that grow when uh, an igneous rock forms totally interlock with each other. In other words, when you have a, a sandstone, you take some other mineral grain from someplace else, you put it with a bunch of other grains, and then you, you glue them together with some kind of a cement. But the rock is easily broken apart again. When you have liquid magma that either erupts at the surface or cools underground, 
when it begins to grow, the crystals grow within that magma, one next to the, the other. You may have different minerals growing next to each other. You may have a, a mineral of quartz that starts to grow in one location, a mineral of, of feldspar, a mineral grain of some other material. And, but as they grow, they consume all of the melt, all of the molten rock, until every single crack is filled in. So when you have a rock like this um, a phonolite, it's really, really tough. Now, there's something important also about this rock. It's, a phonolite is a fairly rare type of rock. Um, it's actually commonly associated with melting um, in the middle of a continent, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment. But what's important is it's a combination somewhere between a basalt and a granite. It has more quartz in it than a typical basalt rock. And this is really important because the basalt lava that we've seen in several of our other lectures um, actually erodes fairly easily. If you go to a place like Hawaii or somewhere where lava has flowed out recently, it very quickly breaks down and weathers into a soft, crumbly clay. Granite, which has so much quartz in it, weathers a lot more slowly. And it's just a lot tougher rock. Well, this phonolite is kind of like a basalt that we've seen in several of our other lectures, but it's got a lot more quartz in it. And so the quartz makes it tough, resistant, and it ends up standing up over the surrounding environment long after the other rocks have washed away. Now, why would you have a rock like this coming up in the middle of the continent at all? Now, you remember back in the lecture of Bryce Canyon, when I talked about that grand staircase of multiple layers of rock going from the Grand Canyon to Bryce Canyon, I pointed out one place in that geologic cross-section where uh, magma had come up from underneath and had erupted at the surface. And I said that there are volcanoes that have been around underneath the surface of North America, even though we don't see any occurring now. Well, what happened here in the case of Devil's Tower is some very hot rock from beneath the mantle came up probably still in a solid form, but began to come up in contact with the bottom of the continent and began to heat the base of the continent. And it began to melt the rocks that are down there. This is quite common when you have a hot spot sitting underneath a continent, like we saw when we looked at the African Rift Valley. Well, this magma at the base there is a combination of different compositions. It has some of the magma from that mantle rock. It tends to be very dark and black, comes out as basalt. But as it goes through the continental rock, it also melts some of that uh, more granite type composition. So what comes out in the phonolite to form Devil's Tower is a mixture somewhere in between the two. Now, the rocks of Devil's Tower have a, a fairly gray, gray-green appearance. They actually stand out quite a bit from the surrounding sedimentary rocks, which tend to be the alternating layers of sandstones, shales, which we've seen before often with a reddish color, and the limestones, which have a, a sometimes whitish color, as do gypsums. So this rock of Devil's Tower um, really stands out in the whole environment much the way Uluru did in the desert in Australia. Now, 